Hey everybody, this is Jared Teague with DNT Media, and we're out here at SUZ, or Saline County Regional Airport, and we've gotten to know some of the great personalities and pilots out here. Today, we're talking with Aaron Parsons, and this is the first episode of SUZ Pilot Profiles. Hi everybody, my name is Aaron Parsons. I live here in Benton, Arkansas. I'm the owner of this 2009 Flight Design CTLS. I'm gonna give you a quick uh, breakdown and rundown of it today. So to give you a little bit of history of me, um, I grew up, I was born in California area, um, ended up in the Marine Corps, served active duty in the Marine Corps, reserve in the Marine Corps, moved back to Arkansas in 2010. I started my pilot training in 2009, 2008, 2009 in Southern California, Los Angeles, Orange County area. Started flying there, did about 60 hours, never finished my private pilot. Uh, that was due to, actually I stopped when I moved back to Arkansas. So took a long hiatus from that. And in 2018, I started training again. What got me training and started again getting my private pilot certificate was uh, I became a drone pilot, part 107 drone pilot for my job uh, in law enforcement. I got back into the drone training, started doing the testing and flying of the drone and the aviation bug just bit me again. I wanted to get back into it. So luckily I, I was able to and I was in a point in my life where I was able to. So got back into it, joined the Central Arkansas Flying Club here in, at KSUZ and uh, now we're, we're here with my airplane. What we have is my 2009 Flight Design CTLS. I bought this in Cottonwood, Arizona, or Phoenix, Arizona. Um, it's just north of, of Phoenix, Cottonwood is. Um, <clears throat> did a lot of research on airplanes, went back and forth for a long time. I trained in the 172 high wing, so I really wanted a high wing. I know there's a lot of different people that like high wing and they like low wing. I'm a high wing person. It's what I like. So I was sticking with the high wings with what I was looking at. For the bang for the money, for what I, what I was looking at, this plane came in, and I did, like I said, a lot of research, this plane came in on top. I got a newer model. I got uh, all upgraded avionics, digital everything, glass cockpit, no, nothing's analog anymore, like I was looking at for the same price for a legacy model 172. Uh, the flight design CTLS, the reason I chose this plane, it fits my mission perfectly. I fly all by myself 99.9% .9 of the time. I have occasional passengers, friends that wanna go up. Uh, my wife does not fly with me. I, w I wish she would. That's the one thing if I could change. If my wife would fly with me, we could go on vacation, we could travel, I would make that happen, but unfortunately she does not like to fly. So um, my mission is just me flying by myself. So that's why I chose I, the two-seater. Um, it, it fits my mission. I travel, I cruise at 120 knots. My fuel burn, I've had it as low as 3.7 gallons per hour. Uh, typical fuel burn is 4.5 to 5 gallons per hour. Um, on a cruise at 120 knots. I can burn uh, regular 93 no ethanol octane, uh, 93 octane no ethanol fuel or 100 low lead. The plane actually prefers the 93 no ethanol. So that's usually what I stick with. It's cheaper and, and it, my maintenance is a little bit easier going with that. So um, anyway, purchased this in March of last year. 2019, flew it home, and I actually finished my private pilot certificate with it here at the airfield. Right now, I'm on a mission in my plane. I want to land at every airfield in the state of Arkansas. There are 97 airfields that I found in the state, public airports, there, there's several private. 97 public airports in the state of Arkansas, I've landed at approximately 55 at this point. I will tell you that KSUZ here in Saline County is a hidden gem. Um, of those 55 something that I've been to in Arkansas alone, plus the ones in the other states I've landed at, this airport is a, is a top notch airport. I'll get into the engine on, on my flight design CTLS. It's equipped with a 100 horsepower Rotax engine. Um, that's what gives me my 120 knot cruise. Um, but the thing about this engine is they're made and, and I talked to my AMP about it. These are the same engines that fly the Predator drones for the United States military. Um, this same exact engine and uh, they're, they're just hands down, they're, they're bulletproof engines. Uh, they don't have a lot of issues at all. They're very economical with the fuel, like I mentioned before. And uh, secondly with it, um, along with that fuel burn, I don't have to do any type of leaning when I'm in the air. 
I give my throttle, I take off. There's no lean of peak, rich of peak, any type of leaning. The airplane automatically compensates and does everything for you with the engine. There's a, all the electronics in the engine do that for you. So that makes flying a lot easier. It's just one less thing you have to focus on. Um, also, along with the 100 horsepower Rotex engine, a little bit thing different about this airplane is the brakes are hand brakes. Normal airplanes, the Legacy 172s, you're pushing those pedals, rudder pedals forward for your brakes. In the Flight Design CTLS, I have a hand lever that I pull back for the brakes. I took a little bit of getting used to, but now that I have that, I could not imagine flying with toe brakes again. It just, it, it changes it. You automatically reach for that brake with your hand. I find it a lot easier flying that way. You're not, you're not pushing uh, on the rudders or pushing a brake when you're not supposed to when you're taxiing because your hand brake is right there. It's also, the Flight Design's also equipped with a BRS parachute system, whole airplane parachute system, similar to what the Cirruses are equipped with. Um, what it is, is it's a rocket system and a parachute that's in the back of my airplane. If for some reason I lost control of the airplane, I was got into some type of spin situation I was able to recover from, I'm going to pull the power back, shut the engine off, and there's a handle inside the airplane. I, I grab the handle, I push it all the way forward towards my GPS system that shoots a rocket out the back of my airplane, drags the parachute out with the rocket, deploys the parachute and then lowers me safely to the ground. That's another one of the main reasons why I chose the Flight Design CTLS, just that added safety feature. You have it in the back of your mind. You know, if you lose your engine, um, you can, a lot of the times, glide safely down, have a place to land. But if you're flying in the middle of the night in southern Arkansas and there's nothing but pine trees and you can't see because it's pitch dark and you don't know where you're going to land anyway, just to have that safety in the back of my mind, knowing worst case scenario, I can pull this parachute and be, drift to the ground um, and, and there's been and that's with the BRS parachute system if you go to their website and look it shows and they tout how many lives they have saved over 400 lives they have saved with ballistic parachute deployments with that system. Yeah, here, here at Saline County Airport when I started flying again doing my flight training I was flying in the Central Arkansas Flight Club airplanes at the time I had not purchased my flight design yet I was in the market looking for an airplane, so I knew I was going to, to purchase one. So I went to the airport manager, Dane Pruitt, here at the airport and, and went ahead and got on the list to get a hangar. I, I knew that the airplane was coming. I wanted to put the cart in front of the horse and, and get the hangar started because the type of person I am, I do not want my airplane sitting on the ramp. I do not want my airplane out in the elements. Um, it's just safer and better to have it hangered. So I had a concept in my mind what I wanted to do with my hangar. I wanted to make it a hangout man cave area. I wanted to be able to come to my hangar and when I'm at the airport enjoy myself. When I go flying, if my wife wanted to hang out in the hangar, I wanted it to be comfortable for her. That was real big for me. She doesn't, unfortunately, she does not like to fly with me. So I wanted her to have the comforts of home at the hangar with everything she had at home. Refrigerator, food, TV, microwave, everything she could possibly have to, to have the comforts of home where she could have a nice place to hang out in the hangar while I was out flying and vice versa for my flight planning. I wanted to be able to come to my hangar and do my flight planning in comfort. It just sets you up for the flight. When you're in a nice, comfortable, uh, regulated environment doing your flight planning, you're comfortable and ready for your flight when it gets started. I located a company in Stuttgart that dismantles aircraft that have been um, retired from major airlines and they sell off the airline, uh, they sell off the pieces to other airlines that are in need of, of the parts. So I contacted that company because I knew I had the thought in my mind of what I wanted to do with my hangar. And I'm a big Southwest, I fly Southwest everywhere I go. So contacted them, I found one of the old 737s that they were parting out there on the airfield. And I purchased everything I thought would be really cool and comfortable for my hangar from there. So I purchased two rows of seats from the Southwest 737. I had them actually cut a side of the fuselage off over the emergency exit and over the wing. And I brought that into my hangar, came up with some lighting ideas just to make it some, some to put it in my hangar, just as a conversation piece for my hangar. Um, I also purchased a 767 captain's chair from a S Hawaiian Airlines uh, 767 that I use in front of my Pac-Man machine. That's my chair that I sit in when I play Pac-Man, uh, flying Hawaiian Airlines captain's chair. At my entrance is where I set up my workstation and my desk in order to do my flight planning for my flights. I also made sure I brought in all my manuals, all my maintenance history to my airplane. I keep it right here, readily accessible in the hangar for me so I have it. Also just some reference materials and documentation, far aim and whatnot that I have in the hangar. In case I need to research something or look something up, I always have it.
basically. Yeah, I'm do it simple. Nope. Yeah. What you got? <laughs> it's so uh, loosen these, just and loosen that, that will lower it. Yeah, just just loosen those top ones. It will lower it to your waist. Okay. And then you tighten your waist first, oh, so gotcha. on the side okay, here, gotcha. and then you tighten the top. I'm sorry, I should have told you that. Because okay. in a car, you don't have four over points. Here, I was like, yeah, this isn't, yeah. <laughs> this isn't right. You're not going to touch the rotor pedal, so just relax. It's everything you need to do. So. Okay. What's this um, button do? That's going to be your push to talk. So if you want to talk on the radio, ah. push that button down. That's my auto autopilot engage, disengage. That's push to talk. So if you want to talk on the radio, right now we're on, that's our primary channel. We're on 12280, which is the CTAF for Saline County. And that's our main channel. If I wanted to flip channels, 13212 is our weather. Wind. I just press that oh, button. It goes, that makes it our primary. Uh -huh. Beautiful thing about this Garmin SL30 comp nav radio is I'm on 12280. That's my primary channel. I could monitor 13212 and hear it. But if someone talks on 12280, it's going to stop that because that's my primary channel. And I'll hear that instead of that. So I could monitor one channel and have another primary. All right, we're going to taxi over to run up. Brakes good, that was me checking the brake. The brakes are working fine. I'm at 120, so I can do my run up now. Parking brake is on, doors are closed and latched, controls are free and correct. Oil temp is above 120, we're at 142, I'm going to throttle to 4,000. What I'm doing in my run-up is I'm watching my RPM, I'm going to get up to 4,000, I'm checking my gauges to make sure everything is in the green, and stays in the green, and looks good. This is going to be our, one of our last chances before we take off to make sure my engine is running properly, which it is. I'm at 4,000 RPM. My uh, ING is good, temperature good, PSI is good, volts, everything's good. Right now I'm burning 5.5 gallons an hour, or 4.7 gallons an hour. That's my fuel PSI, which is pressure, fuel pressure, which is good and in the green. EGTs, exhaust gas temperatures are good, cylinder head temperatures, everything's good in the green. It's a beautiful thing about these avionics is I can see everything and I just see that it's in the green I know that it's good also if something's not in the green my engine alarm lights are going to come on and that's going to notify me so if I, for some reason I'm not paying attention like I'm supposed to those are going to come on start flashing and start making a real loud beeping noise in your in your ear to let you know hey something's wrong so all right uh, traffic, uh, uh, alarm lights are off right we're going to do a mag check and right on less than a 300 drop which is good and left a 300 drop, both are good. Right, I'm going to do a carb heat check. That's that carb heat I talked to you about. I'm going to see a drop in my RPM, meaning it's putting warm air into my carburetor. That way, if we came into an icing condition, it would melt that ice. So we know warm air is in there. When you put that warm air in, you get an automatic drop in your RPM. Take that carb heat out. You're going to watch. You're going to see that carb. That RPM is going to go back up. So and there it goes. All right. So carb heat's working, and we're going to throttle to idle. I try to keep idle. Zero. All the way down. My trims are set. So this is stabilator trim. It's right in the middle. Uh, aileron trim and rotor trim. Everything's in the middle. The BRS uh, parachute safety pin is out. All right. All right. Um, we're going to go ahead and taxi to takeoff. And then I'll do one more last briefing with you there. And then we'll do our takeoff. Takeoff checklist. Flaps zero or fifteen. Take off. Flaps. Car heat off. Pushed out. Choke off. Up. Fuel shut off valve is up. Lights all on. Lights are all on except for the cockpit light. Transponder on alt. Autopilot is off. Engine alarm lights are off. Gauges are in the green. We're green, green. Everything looks good. Nothing is uh, out of alignment there. All right, emergency procedures. So uh, our field altitude here is 1,000, approximately 1,400 feet. Anything below 1,400, if we have an engine out, I'm just going to put it down. We're going to land straight ahead. If I am above 1,400 and have an engine out, I'm going to turn and uh, try to make it back to the airport. Uh, but if I'm below 1,000 feet and I try to make that turn, 
Losing altitude, it's better just to land straight ahead or within 30 degrees of you. The beautiful thing about taking off runway 20, that's why I love this runway. If we had an engine out and we're below 1,400 feet, there's a huge green open field right over there to your left. You just turn and land. That's always been my plan. I'm going to turn and <laughs> land right in that big open green field over there. Always good to have the plan. Yep, you'll see it when we take off. All right, final's clear. Last thing I'm going to do is line up. I am confirmed. I'm on runway 20. I'm going to make sure my compass lines up with runway 20 here. Traffic, Which it does. We're good to go there. All right, flaps 15, power. Here we go. I'm going to go full power, a little bit of right rudder. Gauges are in the green. We have full power. Everything looks good. I'm watching my airspeed. Airspeed's alive. Fuel pressure low. That fuel pressure low sensor is fine. That's normal on takeoff. Okay. I should have warned you about that beforehand. Right. So we are off. And I'll explain that to you here in a moment. Uh, let me do some flying here, and then we'll explain that to you. Right. Selene County traffic, flight event 2340, 1,000 climbing to 3,500, departing to the south, last call, Selene County. There's that green field I told you about. All right. Only thing you have to worry about, you see the telephone poles that go through right through the middle of it. So my goal is try to land on the other side of those so I don't hit those. So. Okay. But that's always my backup plan for an engine out. We're looking good. Everything's fine right now. I noticed it took literally no time to get off the ground. This thing picks up, especially if I'm by myself. I'm like 800 feet. I'm in the air. It's crazy. Pretty crazy how quick you're up. Good afternoon, Little Rock Approach. Flight design 234 Zulu VFR request. Flight design 234 Zulu Little Rock Approach. Say request. Just departed to the Swing County to the south, uh, in out for a maintenance test flight uh, to the Pine Bluff Airport area. We'd like to call it flight following. Uh, currently 2,100, climbing to 3,500. Aircraft type, Foxtrot Delta, Charlie, Tango. All right. I should have warned you about that in just because I told you, if that comes on, not necessarily. So yeah. the fuel pressure, anytime the temperature starts to get warmer, uh -huh. when you go full throttle, that's a, a, an issue with the CTLS, and, and uh, there's a, a fuel pressure sensor that is in the front of the aircraft. Well, anytime the temperature starts to get warmer, when you go full throttle for the first probably two to three seconds that fuel it sets it's that first amount of fuel is going through that fuel pressure sensor and it, it set that's what sets that off but if you notice after two to three seconds it stopped okay so after that first two to three seconds on the ground if it doesn't stop i would abort my takeoff but obviously it stopped so we're, we're good it just it's that first little bit of fuel it's just warm fuel going through there and it just reads the, the pressure incorrectly because it's warm for being pushed through the pressure sensor gotcha. so that's why it did that I should have pre-warned you on that. Um, had that lasted longer than the three seconds and it stayed on, we would have powered idle, aborted that takeoff, and stayed on the ground. Okay, so, okay. Yeah. Um, Since you didn't react to it immediately, yeah. I, uh, I got the sense that <laughs> it, it was, was normal. It was okay. The CTLS is a unique aircraft. Um, it's all carbon fiber. Most airplanes are, are manufactured. They're made out of aluminum or metal. This airplane is all carbon fiber. That's why you get your lightweight. So the... FDCT, that's what the aircraft is. It's a flight design. What's flight design? CT is carbon technology. That's what the CT stands for because we're all, uh, it's made of carbon fiber that keeps the aircraft lighter. Um, and another unique thing is on our flaps, you can see we're at negative six right now. When I go into cruise, I kick my flaps up to negative six. I don't know of another aircraft, general aviation aircraft, for flaps going the negative. We're actually in the negative six flaps that kicks it up. That gives us a more stabilized cruise and a faster cruise speed. Okay. with that negative six in the flaps. So I have a range of negative six all the way down to 35 on the flaps. Okay. When, when I land, I'm generally going to land anywhere between 15 to 30. Uh, I generally don't land with 35 degrees of flaps. That gives us a lot of drag in this aircraft. And um, I, you know, I've never needed that much drag in, in, a, in a land to, to land with 35. Generally, I land between 15 and 30. Heavy, heavy crosswinds. I'll even land with zero. Uh, last week, I was flying into Conway Airport. I had a 10-knot direct crosswind. I was landing with zero degrees flaps because of that 10-knot direct crosswind. You're looking off your right wing there towards the city of Stuttgart. Uh, my family is, is from that Stuttgart. Way. Is that where they're from? Well, that The airport there is actually a really nice airport. I don't know the history of it, but it's a really nice airport as far as the lengths of a runway, really long runways. Really? Huh? I've never been. I've never been. Never flown down there? No, no, no. Come down sometime. We'll fly over there. I like flying. So. Lady <laughs> copy. Little Rock Approach, flight design 2340, making our turn, going to head back to Swain County. Flight design 
three four zero. Roger. A big change for me. I, I'd always flown a Cessna one seventy two. That's what I pilot trained in. So I did not know if I would like the stick. First time I flew it, I don't ever want to fly anything but the stick now. Really? I love flying the stick. It just it's really cool and really a lot of fun. I don't. Yeah. Flying a yoke would be weird to me now. You can see there's. Uh, it looks like there's an airplane flying right at us. He's not. He's at thirty five thousand feet above us. Oh, okay. There he is, right there. If you look right above us, see him. Oh. There he is. And yeah, that is a United Airlines 1128. Okay. So that's a United Airlines. So, oh. full sunroof. Action. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so and that's I, I have 360 views in yeah. this airplane. Uh, I've got awesome. the windows behind me, in front of me, to my I'm side. Right I've got a lot of a lot of viewing in this window. Yeah, so. yeah. But now we're burning 4.4 gallons per hour. Uh, 34 gallons, 17 uh, gallons in each tank. That shows our fuel computer. That shows how many gallons we have left. That shows gallons we've used in flight. So the total amount we've been flying right now, we've used three gallons of fuel. Um, if you look up here, you see these little gauges here, and it looks kind of yellow. That's the actual fuel you see. That's that's a backup. So say we lost everything. We lost our our digital instruments. Our back our backup went down. It's also a way just to double check this. I can look up there, and I can see how many gallons of fuel we have left. We're going to go ahead and make our call when we're about 10 miles out. And I'm going to let Little Rock Approach know I have the field in sight, which I can see the field right off to our about 11 o'clock at Saline County Airport. I've been there so many times, I know right where it's at. Okay. Six, five miles, final five, I still can't see it. It's about 11 o'clock. Oh, okay. You'll, you'll see it as we get closer. Oh, I do. I see it. All right. I've been there. You just, you, this local area I know so well just from yeah. flying in it so much, so... Swing County traffic, flight design 234 Zulu, 10 miles southeast, inbound, uh, left 45, runway 20, Swing County. The airport is straight off our nose. If you see the big green field, that's the field, my uh -huh. emergency field I talked about landing in. The airport's uh -huh. right to the right of it, in front of it if you see it. Okay, yeah. That's Swing County. We're going to come in at a left 45, enter the pattern, and uh, do, our, do our pattern that way. Okay. Swing County traffic, flight design 234 Zulu, 5 miles to the east, southeast. Inbound for a midfield left 45 two zero looking for traffic in pattern. So Lane County. We're watching for you, sir. 6213 Lane County. That double tap, he just said he'd be watching for us. That double tap on the mic, that just means you copied, you hear what he said. Understood. That's basically it, understood. <laughs> it means you heard him and understood. It's like my car beat out. Power's good, flaps are good. Lane County, Altitude looks good. Clear all runway for Lane County. Swing County traffic 2340 is turning left base 20, Swing County. So if we have to do a go around, uh, you'll see me just reaching up, turning carb heat out, adding full power. We're going to leave 15 degrees of flaps in. We'll just take off and do the pattern one more time if we have to. If, I, if I'm not happy coming down or I feel like I'm floating or it might be a hard landing or something, I always go around. Safety first, go around, try it again. Okay. Swing County traffic 2340 is turning final 20, Swing County. Power out. We're uh, right where we want to be. Vassies look good. We've got two white and two red. And good. Very That's nice. Negative six. We're going to try to go off right here. Also have the extra weight in here. It makes the landings a lot. Honestly, this, especially with this aircraft, the more weight you have, the easier the landings are. Okay. So when I have more weight, my landings are just, you don't, when I say easier, you don't float as much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm well, glad I could be in my Help. Yeah, so, bug in here. Uh, let's do this. Let's get some air anyway. Open this door up. Get him out of here. Well, we really enjoyed flying with Aaron today in his CTLS flight design. We hope you enjoyed watching too. If you did, give us a like and a subscribe and check us out on Facebook and Instagram from all of us at DMT Media and SUZ. We'll see you next time and safe flying.